is a device that undergoes perfect regular cycles of motion. Time is measured by counting how many cycles the device ticks off. A watch counts the vibrations in a piece of quartz. A grandfather clock counts pendulum ticks. An atomic clock measures the repetitive atomic processes. Now, I'm going to introduce you to the world's most accurate, yet impractical, clock. It's called the light clock, and is made of two small perfect mirrors that are facing each other and attached by a bracket. And between them is a single photon, bouncing perpendicular between the two mirrors. If the mirrors are about six inches apart, it will take the photon about a billionth of a second to make one round trip. Therefore, if an event takes about 55 billion photon cycles, then we know that about 55 seconds have elapsed. The reason I've decided to use a light clock instead of a regular clock is because we can see the repetitive motions of a clock as it counts off increments of time. Right, so we have this light clock sitting at rest on a table. All of a sudden, we see a second light clock moving across the table at a constant velocity. Is the moving light clock ticking at the same rate as a stationary light clock? In order to answer this question, we first must consider the photon's movement inside the sliding light clock. Since the clock is experiencing a constant velocity and is not accelerating, it will behave like this. Remember, it is behaving like this because it has every right to proclaim that it is standing still and everything else is in motion. This is like the argument between George and Gracie, our two lost astronauts. Both astronauts and light clocks have the right to proclaim that they are standing still and everything else is moving. But from the perspective of the stationary light, the photon of light from the moving light clock has to cover a larger distance since it is moving at an angle. So if the photon has to cover a long distance at the same constant velocity, what does it mean? It means that my previous animation was wrong. The two clocks are not synchronized. This is what really should happen. Exaggerated, of course, so you can see the change. Well, what does this mean? Hint, this is a clock. If one is ticking slower than the other, it means that time is slowing down for the moving clock. Yep, if you're moving, time is slowing down from the perspective of an observer in different constant motion. The clock in motion won't notice any difference in its perception of time, of course. It is important to note that this is true for everything. This example is not a special case that only occurs with light clocks. This is a universal property of time. The light clock was just so you can visualize time slowing down. There are probably some doubters out there, so here, let me prove it. Let's put a Rolex watch and a light clock into the closed window train compartment that we were in earlier. There is no experiment that we can run that can determine whether or not we are both in motion, remember? The light clock and the Rolex are both timepieces, and they should both be measuring off equivalent sections of time. Every billion photon bounces means a second to the Rolex. However, if they should deviate from each other, we have just shown that we are in relative motion without a frame of reference. This is impossible. The light clock and the Rolex must measure off equivalent seconds. They cannot deviate from each other. So, yeah. This is just to prove that the light clock has no special properties. Continuing with the idea of the light clock, the bouncing photon gives us a very interesting insight. The faster you move, the slower time will run. The photon of the first moving clock, when compared to the photon of the second, faster moving clock, travels a shorter distance. So you can kind of see how the second photon must travel a longer distance to make a tick tock compared to the slower clock. So time is moving slower for the second clock. So this is a visual representation of how time passes slower the faster you move. Time elapses more slowly for a guy in motion than it does for a stationary dude. For those of you out there with vivid imaginations, it might seem as though we've discovered the fountain of youth. The faster you go, the slower time goes. Yay! No. Let's show this with a real world example. I'm sure you're tired of trains and whatnot. So there's this particle out there called a muon, and I'm not making this up. It really exists. When at rest, muons disintegrate by a process that is similar to radioactive decay, with an average of about two millionths of a second. They essentially have the lifespan of two millionths of a second before they go bang and explode into electrons and neutrinos. But wait, when muons are shoved into particle accelerators, um, you'll probably tell you what a particle accelerator is. Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It accelerates particles. You might also know them as atom smashers. Particle accelerators smash atoms by accelerating the particles into each other. This sounds crude, but yeah, physics solves things by smashing them. Scientists have sent muons down the accelerator at 667 million miles an hour. 
That's about 99.5% of the speed of light. At these extreme speeds, the muon lives for about 20 millionths of a second before self-destructing, according to our perspective. Its lifespan just increased by a factor of 10. So if we live life at 667 million miles an hour, we'd live for 700 years instead of 70 years. Right? You're forgetting about perspective. According to us, stationary, the muon lives 10 times longer than it should. For the muon, still, only 2 millionths of a second have passed. Consider this abstract example. Let's pretend that a muon, sitting still, lives long enough to read seven books before it explodes. Then, moving at 667 million miles an hour, it still can only read seven books before it dies. Its light clock is still bouncing for the same amount of time, it's just taking longer for our perspective. Expanding this example to humans, it remains true for the fast-moving people with a lifespan of centuries. From their perspective, it's life as usual. From our perspective, it's as though they're living life in hyper-slow motion. Therefore, one of their normal life cycles is an enormous amount, according to us.